Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different, but it's not that different to normal. I say that so many times. I like doing different things. It's exciting. I get to try out different things, see how you guys like it. And also just variety is the spice of life. So not many of you know, but I actually used to play Magic the Gathering a lot. And it was um, the only game I played. I didn't used to play board games whatsoever. And then Sophie was born and I had to reassess my time because I spent every Friday playing Friday Night Magic and played it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I had some cards altered when I played because I quite like the art and I liked having extended. I don't have any in this deck, just one I had to hand. And yeah, as I said, Sophie was born, I had to reassess my time. I took up board games, which I could play more conveniently whenever I wanted with my friends at home. And then I got into painting, which is what this channel is about. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is just show you how to extend some card art for Magic the Gathering in this instance, but it would work for Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Keyforge, maybe? I've not played that. I don't know anything about it. Let me know about Keyforge. Am I missing out? Hopefully you guys who are subscribers to the channel already may be aware of this game, maybe even play it, so you might find this useful. And if you are not a subscriber, if you're new to this channel because of this video, I am going to go through a bit more step by step, assuming that you may never have painted before. I have never painted a Magic the Gathering card before, and I'm not very artistic. Although I paint the miniatures, I feel like compared to you know, actually painting and trying to extend art. I, I feel like you need to know how to paint to do this, like real painting, not <laughs> not that painting miniatures isn't real painting, but you know what I mean? This is different, right? Painting a picture on a canvas is very different to following some artwork and copying the colors. I've got to have an imagination. So if you are new to the channel or new to painting Magic the Gathering or just new full stop, um, what we are going to need is some paintbrushes. In this video, I'm going to be using Red Grass Games. They only make two paintbrushes. They have a size two and a double zero. And that's all they say you need. And for this, I think that is all I'm going to need. Now, if I said you might be new to the channel, might never have done this before, I think you will get by with some cheap brushes if you just want to try out painting and extending some art. I don't think it's going to hurt you. But I'm enjoying these paintbrushes and they are the two I needed for Painting Magic the Gathering. So they will do nice. I'll put a link in the description below to them if you'd like to check them out. That's what I'm going to use in this video. You'll also need some sort of palette. I just use a Pringles lid and that's going to do nicely. If you want to upgrade, I do have a Red Grass Games uh, wet palette, which I may or may not use. We shall see. But if you want to save some pennies, Pringles lid, something like that. And then finally, I've got a water pot. This is just from Quick Draw Supplies, and I'll leave a link in the description below. They deliver worldwide as well, and this is like 99 cents or something. It's it's not a lot of money, but you will need something to put water in. And then the final product is you'll need some acrylic paints. I highly recommend using acrylics. And in this video, I'm going to be using army painters of various collections that I've gathered and these are actually the only colors I'm going to need for the, for this tutorial so this is what you're going to need as we go forward it shouldn't cost you too much to pick up these paints but again if you want to save a few pennies and you're just dipping your toe in the water you will get by with just some sort of cheaper craft store just pick up the the colors and you can mix the colors I'm going to be making a lot of different colors just using these six paints so we'll, we'll see how I get on so that's just a run through if you're brand new to painting that is what you're going to need and then uh, oh, I'll just show you what I've done. I have had, I, I say this is the first time I've ever painted it. I've had a little bit of practice just before I've made this video. So you can sort of see where I'm going to be going. But as I mentioned, never tried this. I'm, I'm not particularly artistic enough. In this, I was just really, really quickly, roughly getting a feel for how it would work. So the only thing I've really spent time on is the sky. So that's my best attempt at making that sky blend. And then the rest, just a quick rush job. But I think the waves have come out pretty nicely but yeah I didn't spend very long and then I just started a Gurmag Angler and again I haven't really done anything but I was just playing with the water more closely than the rest but the the one we'll see in this video I'm going to spend a lot more time on these were just quick practice cards to see how I would get forth so stay tuned to see how we get on and let's begin painting right yo here we are and this is the card we're going to be painting it's just a basic mountain it's magic the gathering as i mentioned so this is the back if you're not familiar with it um but yeah just a basic mountain for it's useful and it's really really nice art i really really like the artwork that john avon does and this is just one of my favorite mountains i'll be a bit sad to see the white borders go because i actually like them i think that's controversial but i like the borders but it will also make it easier to alter the artwork because white it's going to be a lot easier to paint over than the the new found black borders so let's get on with painting for the first step which i wouldn't normally do with painting a miniature is we're going to use a rubber to sort of 
make it slightly easier for the paint to go on top of these borders that already exist. Now, I do own an electric rubber, which is infinitely more accurate and a lot easier to paint with. And it was only a dollar off of eBay, but I couldn't find it. And I didn't know how well I was gonna be able to paint this. So it was almost not worth me spending the time finding it. So I'm just using a normal rubber here and I'm just gonna take off some of that ink, some of the darker ink. Now, having now painted this card, I would recommend a little bit more time on the old prep. I should have found my electric rubber or I should have maybe masking taped up the borders. I didn't wanna go over and gone much, much harder in these areas. In the past, I've used acetone to remove ink from from magic cards when i wanted a planes planes i just removed all of the the artwork so i could just have a plain card and that was with a bit of masking tape over the bits i didn't want it to go over and just carefully with some cotton wool uh you know a what do you call it in america the uh oh what's the cotton wool on a stick called Come on, think, cutie, Q-tip, Q-tip, nailed it, first try. Um, but something like that, be, be a little bit more accurate, but again, first time I've ever painted a magic card uh, other than those two test ones, but they didn't count. I didn't do that, that in this. And in this one, I'm doing a little bit more, but hindsight being 2020, doing that more accurately and better would make a huge difference to what I'm gonna do next. Then we're gonna be straight on to painting. I'm gonna start with a, biz, a bizzle black, that's um, just a neat black. I don't think I showed that at the start of the clip, but any any acrylic black will do, but I do favor the Army Painter paints, and that's what I'll be using throughout this video. And we're just gonna start by base coating the, the magic card. So we're gonna get some, some rough colors down straight away over the whole border to, to work up from, from there. So black at the bottom of the artwork, at the bottom of the mountain, it, pretty much is black. I would say it's off black and I could maybe have skipped this step and made an off black to begin with, but I've just gone with black. We'll give it a base coat of black, Abomination Gore, a nice red by the Army Painter here. And we're gonna be doing the base coat of all the red area. So that's around the bottom of the mountain and around the top as well. The sky goes really red, it's sort of mirror image. So just a nice coat of a bright red here is gonna be where we're, we're working up from. And then I'm gonna use Lawful White again, just a, a nice plain white acrylic. And I'm gonna be applying that down the center to give a nice base to build that yellow up. Yellow is a very difficult color to apply, so making sure it's nice and white. And then as I mentioned with that rubber technique, I should have spent a little bit more time and effort clearing out the ink, I think, because I'm using the white here. The red, I was probably on the third, fourth, fifth coat of red, and I still couldn't cover up the border that already existed. So I've given it a splash of white, which is gonna make it a lot, lot easier to paint over, but it is gonna, it's, it, it adds a bit of a bump on top of that ink that I'd previously not rubbed out well enough. It's gonna add a little bit of a bump. Next, I'm gonna be mixing some yellow with some uh, skeleton bone and just about 50-50, just, a, a, a slightly deeper yellow as the base coat. And we're gonna be painting those yellow bands, but just gonna cover the whole white area. And that's gonna allow me to blend white back into it. Then we're gonna take some Necromancer cloaks. So that's a very dark gray. Mixing that with the Abomination Gore, it's pretty much a gray by the end of it. Gray and red doesn't mix awfully well, but it does, it gave it a slight tinge to sort of match the artwork. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend that from the outside of these borders that I'm adding, and I'm gonna be blending that into the mountain, sort of, so I'm almost replacing the original artwork on the card now at this point, and that's gonna give me a really realistic blend and make it look like these borders were part of the original. Then I'm gonna be mixing some darkish blue, some sort of wolfy gray, denim jean color, and with the black, and that's gonna give that off black that I was talking about earlier when I was painting the, the black in, and, and that's gonna match more of the black of the original card ink. And I'm, again, I'm just, you could see I painted over like the all of the original black that's on the mountain, and that's gonna mean that the color blends perfectly along the extended eye, sort of, I didn't go right up to the tips, right up to those tree silhouettes that you could see and I didn't need to, it just made it blend perfectly and it makes it look like it was already there. I painted in some silhouetted trees down the edges myself just to make that look a little bit more realistic and keep with the original artwork just down the borders. So next up, I'm gonna be mixing some orange with some red and about 50-50 and I'm gonna start blending that the red, that base coat of the red that I painted around the mountain and just blending that 
in towards the art, getting much closer to the orange that was originally on the artwork. But again, I'm just moving my brush and painting the extended art colors into the painting. So I'm altering the actual art slightly and that's just just making it look like it was always that orange color anyway. Now these paints are all watered down. They are probably 25% water, something like that. So making sure they're semi-translucent and I'm building up layers and layers. Now I'm not filming every single layer I do and I'm doing them off camera, but you just need to do as many layers as it takes to get the look you want. But because they're watered down, they're nice and thin. And, and I'm saying this because when you're painting onto the original artwork, it's keeping the original artwork there to some extent as well. And you're just adding to it, adding a small layer on top and making the blend much better. Next, I'm gonna be adding probably about 50 50 white and yellow together and then later on adding just adding more and more white making it lighter and lighter or or the opposite way around yellow and yellower and i'm just going to go back and forth blending that center white to, to into that yellow on the outside and blending that yellow back into the white and just giving it some lines and some streaks and making the sky look realistic and imperfect um, no brush strokes showing through, blending it a bit into the orange, the yellow's going into the orange, slightly into the red, and really just working in what looks most realistic. I'm gonna take some neat white at the end and paint back in a big section of white, but doing it again, realistically, just smudging it and blurring it and trying to make the transition in the sky look as realistic as I can. And, and once I've done that bit, I'm completely finished. I spent 57 minutes on this. As I said, I am no proper artist. I paint miniatures and I find them a lot easier than painting real art. This was a nice one to start with because it gives you, um, there's not a lot left to your imagination. It's quite easy to extend this art. I'm trying to show you here with certain light reflecting, you can see the transition on the, the borders and where I've painted on top of the artwork. I just wanted you to be clear what, what sort of look I got at the end. But then I thought, let me just sleeve it up and have a look again. Oh, oh. Now suddenly, <laughs> there's no more of that reflection. You can't see what's real and what's extended, what's the original and what's the extended, it's all real. None of this is in our imagination, guys, but hopefully in a sleeve, and I think you would want to sleeve this anyway, you can see that looks pretty good. I can see a slight border, slight raised bit down the left-hand side, but it's nothing, nothing really to worry about. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial. If you're a regular here I, and you don't play magic and you don't do this sort of thing, I would actually advise, give it a go. It's it's nice to do something different and it is gonna test your artistic capabilities and you might learn something. Blending was a big feature for me here, which I've not had that much practice with. And if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. And even better, let me know in the comments below if you're here just for the magic card and you'd like to see more, let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you all as always for watching and I'll be back next week with, with some miniature painting.